Hello everyone, my name is Melderon. Welcome to the Classic WoW Shaman Totem Guide. I'd like to give special thanks out to both Egregious and Navik for answering any questions I had during the drafting of this presentation. This guide will not only go over how to get your totems, but it will also go over when to use them, how to use them, common totem loadouts, and more. Alright then, let's get started. So why are totems so important? Well, they are a significant part of the Shaman's toolkit, and it's what really makes Shaman unique. You know, hunters have their thing, they have their pets, druids can shapeshift, rogues can stealth. What really sets Shaman apart from the rest of the classes is that they have totems that they can use at their disposal, and they have a totem for almost any situation. Totems provide either player and or party-wide utility in the forms of boosts to your DPS, damage mitigation and reduction, resistances, debuff removal, resource regeneration, and can even alter, or slow, or attract attackers. And finally, it can bolster your PvP prowess by providing support in many situations. Okay, now let's go over basic totem rules. Only one totem of each element type can be down at any one time. That's right, totems are separated by elements. There are four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Totem effects are either player or party-wide. If you are by yourself, only you are receiving the benefits of your totems, and if you're in a party, your entire party receives the benefit if they're in range of the totem. So, if you are a shaman in a raid group, and you put a Wind Fury totem down in the melee section of the raid, not all the melee are receiving that benefit, only the melee that are in your group. It's very important to consider when you're a shaman in a raid. A lot of time and effort goes into strategizing where shaman go in which groups by horde raid leaders, so keep that in mind. Three, totems are on the global cooldown. So when you click a totem, it will cause a global cooldown to elapse. It will take a total of three global cooldowns to place all four of your totems down if you wish to do that. Totems need to be in line of sight of the player and or party member that they will be affecting. If you're behind a wall, the totem cannot see you, therefore cannot provide you the benefit. And finally, totems of each element type are always placed in the same position around you. Okay, so what do I mean by that? In this image, you'll see my shaman in the center looking up or forward in this two-dimensional picture. You'll notice that the fire totem is in the top left, the earth totem is in the top right, the air totem is in the bottom left, and the water totem is in the bottom right. This order or structure of the totems is always the same. The fire totem will always be at my top left, the earth will always be at my top right, and so on and so forth. So this is very important when you consider where totem placement is if there is a mob or player that you're trying to engage in. In other words, if there was a hated enemy to my top left, and I put that Searing Totem down, and it's in range of that enemy, it will hit it, and then cause me to be in combat. I have to consider that whenever I'm running through the world. Another example would be if I'm in a PvP scenario, and I see a rogue go in stealth in front of me. If I want to try to get that rogue out of stealth with, let's say, a rank 1 Magma Totem, I have to maybe turn myself to put that totem closer to him. So I would turn to my right, to make sure that totem is closer to the rogue that just went into stealth. All this means that you may have to start planning where you're standing and where you're looking depending on where you put your totems because it may affect the range of effect that you are trying to produce. Now let's go into totem key binding. In my opinion, it's very important to have key binds set up for certain element types. What I mean by this is that you will most likely have a default earth totem, fire totem, air totem, and water totem that you will be using in almost all scenarios when leveling or dungeoning. For example, let's say I'm soloing in the world, and I want to make sure I have Strength of Earth, Grace of Air, Searing, and Mana Spring up all the time. Well, I highly recommend having buttons that correspond to certain element types. In this picture here, you'll see that F is for Earth, R is for Fire, C is for Air, and G is for Water. This is the setup that I use. You can also move Air from C to T, so you cluster the totems into a group of four. Another option would be to use 1, 2, 3, and 4, as I have circled on this keyboard image. Now these are for your default totems, totems that you use all the time. However, there will be situational or emergency totems that will be used in times of desperation. So for example, on keys Z and X, you'll see I have Grounding Totem and Tremor Totem binded to those keys respectively. These aren't default totems that I use all the time, but I will be using them in certain scenarios if there is, let's say, a mage opening up on me or a warlock trying to fear me. All I'm trying to say here is that you should form a mental map in your brain for each of your default totems in each element type. I feel that many people shy away from trying Shaman because of the totem mechanic and how confusing it may be and how many totems there are. Building these mental maps and realizing that 
certain keys are assigned to certain elements will make it easier for you to understand totems and it actually helps me demystify shaman. Just make sure you have certain bound keys for certain emergency type totems. When you really think about it, totems are just spells, just like every other class has. All you need to do is remember that certain totems will erase other totems because they share an element type. That's the only difference between shaman and any other class. Okay, let's get into each element type of totems. Let's first start with the earth totems. These are dropped to your top right if you're looking forward. This is the first totem you'll obtain, which is at level 4. Uh, orcs and trolls share a quest in the Valley of Trials, while Torin have their own quest over in Mulgore. Now, earth totems are usually defensive in some way. However, there are some significant exceptions. One of them is Strength of Earth Totem, which actually is offensive and giving you plus strength. And then there's Tremor Totem, which could be argued as defensive, but it removes a fear, sleep, or charm effect from the player or the party member. Getting your earth totem for orcs and trolls is relatively easy. When you reach level 4 in the Valley of Trials, you'll have a quest available at your Shaman Trainer, Kanaga Earthcrawler, which is at 4269, to kill Fellstalkers in the cave to the north and loot two hooves. Once you loot these two hooves, you can go back to Kanaga, receive the Earth Sapta, and then head to the south and find the hidden path at 4173, which leads you to Spirit Rock at 4476. Once you're there, you'll see a large stone. Drink the Sapta, and an Earth Elemental will appear. You'll talk to him, and he'll give you another quest, and a rough quartz, which you'll bring back to Kanaga to get your Earth Totem and Stone Skin Totem rank 1. Pretty easy. For Torin players, it's very, very similar. You'll receive a quest from Seer Ravenfeather at 4876. She'll task you with killing Bristleback Shaman, which are located in the Bramble Blade Ravine to the east. You're going to kill the Shaman, loot two ritual selves, and you're going to take those selves and bring them back to Seer Ravenfeather, which she'll give you the Earth Sapta, which you'll, just like the Orc and Troll, you'll have to head to the Kodo Rock, which is at 5380, which is a large stone. Drink the Sapta, and Earth Elements will appear. You'll talk to it, and it will give you a Rough Quartz, which you'll bring back to Seer Ravenfeather, and then she will give you your Earth Totem and Stone Skin Totem Rank 1. Pretty simple, pretty fun quest. All right, now let's get into each of the Earth Totems. The first one we'll cover is Stone Skin Totem. It has a two minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level four with your Earth Totem, and has a range of 20 yards. Now this is a player or party wide buff, which reduces melee damage taken by players and or the party members. Now this is good for tanking if you're a Shaman tank, or when if you're a healer and the party or the players are taking high damage. I don't use this totem very often when soloing because I'd rather have Strength of Earth Totem to increase my uh, DPS. However, in healing situations, I do use it if the tank is squishy or if there's a lot of melee damage going out. This could also be possibly used in raid scenarios if there's heavy melee damage taken out, but most of the time, if you're in the melee group, you're going to be using Strength of Earth to increase DPS. Now, this totem can be affected by Guardian Totems, which is in the Enhancement Tree, and this talent increases the amount of damage reduced by your Stone Skin Totem by 10%. And finally, it is also affected by the Totemic Mastery Talent, which increases all range of your friendly totems to 30 yards. So if you have that talent, Stone Skin will affect players and party members up to 30 yards instead of 20. And this talent is found in the Restoration Tree. Next, we have Earthbind Totem, which is a 45 second duration, a 15 second cooldown, and is obtainable at level 6. Now this has a 10 yard range if untalented. It is a debuff creating totem, and the debuff it creates is that it reduces movement speed of enemies within its range by 50%, and this occurs on a 3 second pulse interval. Now we haven't talked about pulses yet, but most totems in the game pulse. They produce their effect not all the time, but in waves. So. Earthbind Totem pulses every 3 seconds, so if a mob is entering the Earth Totem range and it has just pulsed already, it'll take another 3 seconds-ish or so for that effect to take a place, if it's not resisted. So, you know, Totem effects can also be resisted, something to keep in mind. Now, this is great for control in PvE and PvP situations, but it's also amazing for Earthbind Kiting. This is something that's been developed by Cargos. And if you haven't heard about it, make sure to check out his Shaman leveling guide. The link will be in the description. So the way Earthbind Kiting works is that you have a mob that you want to fight. Instead of trading hit for hit with the mob, you can only get hit by the mob when your swing timer is off cooldown. So essentially what this means is that you're reducing the total damage you'll be taken in the world. So the way this works is you drop your Earthbind Totem, 
aggro the mob and you have it go into the earthbind totems range once you notice that the 50 percent movement reduction is taking place you enter the mob's hitbox and hit them and then you will strafe not back up you will strafe away from the mob until your swing timer is off cooldown, then you'll strafe back into the mob's hitbox, and you'll rinse and repeat this so that only the only times you'll be getting hit is when your swing timer is off cooldown, not when their swing timer is off cooldown. The reason it's important to strafe and not back up or turn around is because if you back up, of course, you're slowing your movement speed. But if you turn around and give the mob your back, you're exposed and are susceptible to the dazed mechanic, which will slow you down as well. It's important to strafe, make sure you are facing the mob at all times so you're not dazed. This works very, very well with slow two-handed weapons. It doesn't work well with fast daggers or one-handers, so if you're using that type of build, uh, I would not recommend Earthbind Kiting, but if you're using a slow two-hander, I would definitely recommend it. You take a lot less damage. You will be sacrificing Strength of Earth Totem, which we'll talk about soon. If you're worried about damage and efficiency and not drinking often, then this may be something that you want to do. There is a diagram in the bottom right-hand side of this slide that explains Earthbind Kiting. I'll be producing a new leveling guide in the future, which will explain this process a lot better. Now, Earthbind Totem is, is affected by Earth's Grasp Talent, which increases the radius of your Earthbind Totem by 10%, and that is in the Elemental Tree. Okay, now let's get into Stone Claw Totem, or as some people call it, the Angry Stick. This is a 15 second duration, a 30 second cooldown, and is obtainable at level 8. Its range is 8 yards. Now, this is a threat producing totem. The effect is that it taunts, quote unquote, mobs every 2 seconds around the totem, and if successful, the mob will attack the totem instead of you. However, this isn't an actual taunt like in Warriors or in Druids. Taunt, effectively, in those classes, brings the player to the top of the threat table. This just produces a fixed amount of threat that increases with each rank of Stoneclaw Totem. So if you're producing more threat than the totem is, it will not pull off of you and it will not work. This also is a pulsing type totem that pulses every two seconds. If you drop the Stoneclaw Totem, it usually won't work right away, it'll take about two seconds for it to pulse. And this is great when you're feeling overwhelmed or you're trying to flee. So if you've got three mobs on you and you want to see if you can get away, you drop this down, it'll hopefully work and they'll attack the totem instead of you and you'll be able to escape. Also, if you pull two mobs by accident, you can drop it and you can kill one mob while Stone Claws dealing with the other mob. Now this is also affected by the Earth's Grasp talent and Elemental and increases the health of your Stone Claw totem by 25% in each rank. All right, now it's time for Strength of Earth Totem. This is a two minute duration and has no cooldown and is obtainable at level 10. It has a 20 yard range. And this is a player or party wide buff totem. The effect is that it increases the strength of the player and or party members that are in range of the totem. This is a great consistent increase of melee attack power and I use it solo almost exclusively and I use it in group content and PVP as well. This is a great totem to use in either solo content or in groups. And it doesn't matter if you're healing or DPSing the dungeon or the group, other melee in the group are going to love the fact you're dropping Strength of Earth Totem. Also, if you're in a raid scenario and you're in the melee group as a Resto Shaman, you will primarily be putting this down as your Earth Totem unless other situational totems are, are being used. This totem is affected by the Enhancing Totem talent and Enhancement, which increases the effect of your Strength of Earth Totem by 8% in Rank 1 and up to 15% in Rank 2. And it's also affected by the Totemic Mastery talent and Restoration, which increases its range to 30 yards. The max rank of Strength of Earth Totem is Rank 5, which is only obtainable through the Tablet of Strength of Earth Totem Rank 5, which drops in AQ20. So if you want to increase the Rank 5, run AQ20 or buy from the Auction House. And last but not least, we have Tremor Totem, which has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, and is obtainable at level 18. And this is a 30 yard range. This is a party or player wide cleanse type totem. And what it cleanses are fear, charm, and sleep effects every 4 seconds. Now this is another pulse type totem and you have to realize that when you first drop the totem it usually will not cleanse the effect. It usually takes about 4 seconds for that first pulse to come through. So timing the totem placement before the fear effect happens is very very important. Now this is usually a required totem in many encounters where mobs or bosses fear, charm, or sleep and you'll see this heavily used in those scenarios. Now interestingly, Tremor Totem already has a 30 yard range, whereas most friendly totems have a 20 yard range. And even though Totemic Mastery says the radius of your totems that affect friendly targets is increased to 30 yards, it actually does increase the effect of Tremor Totem by 10 yards up to 40 yards. This is a little bit of a quirk, and it's true for 1.12 in the system that I use it to collect this data. We don't know if it's going to be available in 1.13. But in 1.12, it does increase the totem's uses up to 40 yards. Something to keep in mind. Alright everyone, it's time to talk about Fire Totems. 
Now this will drop on your top left and is a second totem you'll obtain, which is at level 10. And the quests to obtain the totem are in the Barons and Dorotar, which we'll cover next. Now most fire totems are usually offensive in some way. By providing a damage over time effect to a single target, AoE fire damage, or a weapon enhancement. Now there is one exception to this, which is Frost Resistance Totem, which provides a resistance to frost damage, and that is obviously not offensive. The Call of Fire quest is obtainable from any Shaman Trainer, and the Trainer will tell you to seek out Cranel Fist in the Barrens at 5620. Cranel will give you a torch of the Dormant Flame and tell you to deliver it to Telf Julem, who is on top of a cliff in Dorotar at 3959 right across the South Fury River. Telf will tell you to obtain one Reagent Pouch, which is at 5229 in Doratar from the Burning Blade Cultist in the cave north of Razor Hill, not in the canyon itself but on the cliffs above it, and he'll also tell you to obtain one Fire Tar from the Razor Main Quill Bore east of the crossroads at 5625. This will drop off any of the Quill Bore over there, and you'll have to bring those items back to Telf to obtain the Fire Sapta. Telf will give you the torch, and you'll have to drink that Sapta at the top of the raised area, the cliff area that Telf is standing on. And after you drink the Sapta, a Fire Elemental will spawn. You're going to kill the Fire Elemental, loot the Glowing Ember, and click on the Fire Shrine to obtain the Torch of the Eternal Flame. You're going to take this torch and bring it back to Cranel Fist in the Barrens and receive your Fire Totem and Searing Totem Rank 1. A little bit tougher than the Earth Totem quest, but still doable. Okay, now let's get into the Fire Totems. The first one we're going to cover is Searing Totem, which is a 55 second duration no cooldown, and is obtained at level 10 with your fire totem. It has a range of 20 yards. This totem produces a single target dot in the form of fire damage. Now the way the effect works is that if you are near a hated aligned enemy, now that, that's one that has red text over its name, it will attack the closest red enemy, no matter what. So you have to be very careful when dropping this totem if you don't want to aggro other mobs. It will not attack neutral aligned mobs, those are mobs that are in yellow text, unless you right click it or begin to attack it. So if you are selecting like a boar or something like that in Doratar and you drop your Searing Totem, it won't attack it unless you right click it or hit it. So it's very important to, to consider. But it's also important to consider if, if there's a lot of enemies near it with red text, you don't want to drop the Searing Totem because it'll just pull everything. And you'll see this happen in dungeons a lot too. You'll drop a totem and it'll pull the next pull before the tank does. So be very, very careful where you drop your Searing Totems. Now, Searing Totem can be affected by the Call of Flame talent in the Elemental Tree, which increases the damage of your Searing Totem by 5% each rank, and there's three ranks of that. And it will also be affected by the Elemental Fury talent in Elemental, which increases the Critical Strike damage bonus of your Totem from 50% to 100%. Now, overall, this Totem is useful when soloing, as it provides a single target dot, and it's also great when you're fighting bosses, because it's just an additional damage. It's not great in multi-mob pulls, but it's great in single target pulls. Next is Fire Nova Totem, which is a 5 second duration, a 15 second cooldown, and is obtainable at level 12. And this has a 10 yard range. And this is an AoE fire damage type totem. And the way this totem works is after 4 seconds, the totem actually erupts and causes a wave of fire to emanate from its center and hit all enemies within its range. Now this totem is great for burst AoE damage or to time PvP damage burst. So if you're in a dungeon or a raid and there's a lot of enemies around, you can drop this Fire Nova Totem, it'll hit all enemies within its range. Also, if you're in a PvP skirmish and you know you're gonna about to burst someone down, you can throw this totem down and time it so when you're Wind Fury procs or when you're gonna hit them with Chain Lightning, something that will shock the player and all the damage that's being put out. Now this totem is also affected by Call of Flame, which increases its damage by five, 10, and 15% with each rank. It's also affected by improved Fire Totems, which reduces the delay before the Fire Nova Totem activates by one second. Finally, it's also affected by Elemental Fury, which increases its critical strike damage bonus to 100%. Next is Magma Totem, which has a 20 second duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 26, and is an eight yard range. This is also an AoE fire damage totem similar to Fire Nova, but the difference here is that the AoE fire damage ticks every two seconds for a total of 20 seconds. This totem is good for sustained AoE damage, but it's very, very good for unstealthing rogues and druids. In this scenario, you're going to use rank 1, which is the cheapest one to use mana-wise, and you're going to drop it down if you suspect that the rogue or druid is coming into your range. It will tick every two seconds, and if that rogue or druid enters the magma totem's range, it will damage them, and in that way, unstealthing them. So this is very good for that scenario as well. Otherwise, it's good for just some sustained AoE damage in dungeons or raids. However, it does cause threat, so if you're using it in the beginning of a pull, the tank probably won't be able to hold aggro all the mobs and the mobs will attack the totem this happens a lot you have to know when to drop it it's really not good when soloing because if you're soloing a group of mobs they will immediately attack it and kill it 
Now this is also affected by Call of Flame, increasing the damage by 5, 10, and 15% with each rank. It's also improved just like Fire Nova Totem by improved Fire Totems, which decreases the threat generated by the Magma Totem by 25% and 50%. And then finally, it also is affected by Elemental Fury, which increases its critical strike damage bonus to 100%. Next is Flame Tongue Totem, which has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 28, and has a 20 yard range. Now this is a weapon enhancement type totem, and enhances party members or the player's main hand weapons with Flame Tongue Weapon, which with every strike, adds fire damage. Now, this is good in heavy melee groups, before you have Wind Fury Totem, or if targets have high armor, since magical damage bypasses armor. So you're primarily going to use this in group settings. You're not going to use this on yourself because if you want to use Flame Tongue, you're going to use the Flame Tongue Weapon Enhancement on your own weapon. But this provides Flame Tongue Weapon to your party. So if you're in a dungeon, there's melee. Even the tanks will benefit from this because this is extra damage to them. You drop this down for your Fire Totem and it will give all of the party members a Flame Tongue Weapon on their main hand weapons. So this is a great totem, especially before you get Wind Fury Totem. Now this is affected by improved weapon totems in the enhancement tree, which increases your damage caused by your flame tongue totem by 6% in rank 1 and 12% in rank 2, and it is also affected by totemic mastery talent restoration, which increases the totem's range to 30 yards. Something to keep in mind if you are in a group with a druid tank, druids do not benefit from either flame tongue totem or wind fury totem. So if there aren't any melee in your group, except for the druid tank, do not use this totem or wind fury because it's just a waste of time. Finally, we have Frost Resistance Totem, which is a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 24, and has a 20 yard range, and this provides a resistance to frost damage. Now the effect is it increases frost resistance of the player and or party members within range by a fixed amount increasing with each rank. Now, this is really important in fights where there's a heavy frost damage being dealt, of course. For example, many counters in next Ramus, including Sephiron and Kel'Thuzad. This totem is affected by the Totemic Mastery Talent, which increases its range from 20 to 30 yards. Now let's get into the water totems. Water totems will be placed at your bottom right side. This is the third totem obtained at level 20. Now this is a long and infamous quest chain that spans both continents, so get ready for some running. Thankfully, you'll have Ghost Wolf at this point. Now water totems are supportive in nature. They either regenerate resources via health or mana, they provide debuff cleansing, or they provide a resistance, in this case fire. Okay, let's get into the Call of Water quest. This will start at your Shaman Trainer at level 20, and the Shaman Trainer will inform you to seek out Island Water Seer in the Barrens at 6644 on the eastern shore, south of Ratchet. Island will tell you to seek out Brine in the southern Barrens at 4377, so you have to running there, you have to run all the way down south of Cantarajo, north of Razorfin Crawl. Brine will give you an empty brown water skin and tell you to fill it at the pool literally under her hut. Apparently she can't do it herself and return it to her. Next, she'll give you an empty red water skin and tell you to fill it in a well in Taran Mill all the way in Hillsbred Foothills at 6119. So you'll head over to Dorotar, take the Zeppelin from Orgrimmar and most likely run the whole way to Taran Mill. Once you fill the water skin, you'll bring it back to Brine in the Southern Barrens and then she'll give you an empty blue water skin which she once filled at a fountain in the ruins of Stardust in Ashenvale at 6119. So you run up there, fill up the water, and then bring it back to Brine in the Southern Barrens. At this point, she'll give you a vial of the purest water, and she'll tell you to bring this to Island Water Series 6644 again, and finally, Island will give you the Water Sapta. But you have to take the Water Sapta all the way back to the Eastern Kingdoms to Silver Pine Forest at 3845. Once you get to the location, which is ever found, you will drink the Sapta and defeat the Water Elemental. You will then loot the remaining drops of the purest water and the Corrupt Manifestations Bracers from the corpse, and then click on the brazier that's located in that, in that area. Finally, after clicking on the brazier, you will talk to the uncorrupt water elemental and it will give you the shard of water to bring back to Island Water Seer back in the Barrens. So now you'll hop back on the Zeppelin, head over to the Barrens, bring the shard of water to Island Water Seer and she'll finally give you your water totem and healing stream totem rank 1. Alright, let's get into the totems now. The first totem we're going to talk about is healing stream totem. This is a 1 minute duration, has no cooldown, is obtained at level 20 with your water totem, has a range of 20 yards. And this is an AoE heal over time. This either heals the player or all party members that are in range every 2 seconds. This is good for long fights with consistent AoE damage going out. 
I usually do not use this in most circumstances unless mana isn't an issue. I usually prefer mana spring totem for my water totem, but if you're not having mana issues, just use healing stream totem for some small consistent healing. Now this totem is affected by restorative totems, which increases the effect of your healing stream totem by 5% with each rank up to 25%. And it is also affected by totemic mastery, which increases its range from 20 to 30 yards. Next we have Mana Spring Totem, which has a 1 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 26, and is at 20 yard range. This is an AoE Mana Regeneration Totem. It restores mana for players and or party members every 2 seconds. This is my default for soloing, dungeoning, and raiding, especially when I'm in a caster or healer group. It is very beneficial over long fights to have mana regenerating constantly, especially if you can provide that to other casters or healers. This totem is affected by restorative totems, increasing its effectiveness by 5% with each rank up to 25%, and totemic mastery, increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Next we have Mana Tide Totem, which is very unique in the fact that it's the only totem that is acquirable through the talent system. It is the 31 point talent in the restoration tree. It has a 12 second duration, a 5 minute cooldown. It is obtainable as low as level 40 if you have it as your 31 point talent in the restoration tree, and has a range of 20 yards. It is also an AoE mana regeneration totem. This one, however, has a much shorter duration at 12 seconds and restores more mana for the player and or party members every 3 seconds. This totem is a very important cooldown for when mana needs to be regenerated during long encounters. And this is usually true during long raid boss encounters. This totem is affected by the Totemic Mastery talent which increases its range from 20 to 30 yards. Because of its usefulness, this is one of the most important totems used in all of Horde raiding and you will see shamans strategically placed into certain groups to provide this manatee totem every 5 minutes. Next we have the cleansing totems. First is poison cleansing totem which has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 22 and has a 20 yard range. This is a player or party wide cleanse totem. This totem attempts to cleanse one poison effect from the player and or party members in its range every 5 seconds. Again this is a pulsing type totem so it usually will not remove the effect when it's first placed down but will start to remove the effects after its first pulse. This is an excellent totem to use when party wide poisons are being applied in that it's more mana efficient than clicking cure poison up to 5 times. This totem is affected by the totemic mastery talent in restoration increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Next is the Disease Cleansing Totem, which is very, very similar to Poison Cleansing Totem. It also has a 2 minute duration, has no cooldown, is obtained later at level 38, also has a 20 yard range. And this is a player or party wide cleanse. The only difference between this one is that it removes diseases, not poisons, every 5 seconds. Again, this is much more mana efficient to use when party wide diseases are being applied, in that it's more mana efficient than clicking Cure Disease multiple times. This totem, like Poison Cleansing Totem, is affected by Totemic Mastery, increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Finally, we have Fire Resistance Totem, which has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 28 and has a 20 yard range. This is a Resistance type totem, which increases the fire resistance of players and or party members within its range by a fixed amount increasing with each rank of the totem. It is very important in fights where fire damage is dealt raid wide, including encounters of Molten Core, Onyxia's Lair, and Blackwing Lair. Because of this, you'll see Shaman strategically placed in many different groups to provide this buff. This totem is also affected by Totemic Mastery, increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Finally, it's time to talk about Air Totems. Air Totems will be placed on your bottom left side. This is the last totem obtained at level 30, and is obtainable after a very, very short quest chain in Thousand Needles. Air Totems are pretty much a catch-all category, and then they have many useful effects by either increasing damage, increasing damage reductions, providing a resistance in the form of nature resistance, acting as a threat reduction, and even used to do some reconnaissance. Okay, let's talk about the Call of Air quest. This is a very, very easy quest. I think after Blizzard made us run all over the world, obtaining the Water Totem, they felt bad for us and gave us a freebie. The quest is obtainable at level 30 from your Shaman Trainer, and they'll tell you to talk to Prey Clouds here, who is located in a cave in Thousand Needles at 5443. All you have to do is talk to Prate and she gives you your Air Totem, and an amazing buff that increases your movement speed and attack speed for one hour called Swift Wind. And that's it. Let's get into the air totems then, shall we? Let's talk about the totem that seems to be the most popular and why shamans are brought into many, many groups. Wind Fury Totem has a two minute duration, has no cooldown, is obtainable at level 32, and has a 20 yard range. And this is a weapon enhancement type totem, similar to Flame Tongue Totem. 
This totem imbues party members' main hand weapons with Wind Fury weapon, which provides a 20% chance to produce an extra attack with an extra attack power bonus on each swing of that main hand weapon. It's very similar to the Wind Fury weapon you put on yourself, but instead of two extra attacks, they get one. So this is a very, very good totem to have in heavy melee groups, and you'll be providing this totem if you're in a melee group in a raid setting as well. Providing a 20% chance to perform an extra attack for melee players is a huge increase in DPS. This totem is so good that if you ever walk into a dungeon, the rogues and warriors immediately ask for Wind Fury Totem. This totem is affected by improved weapon totems, which increases the melee attack power bonus of Wind Fury Weapon to 15% rank 1 and to 30% rank 2, and this totem is also affected by Totemic Mastery, increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Next we have Grace of Air Totem, which is a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, it's attainable at level 42, and has a 20 yard range. And this is a player or party wide buff totem, which increases the agility of the player and or party members by a fixed amount increasing with each rank. This is great for a consistent increase of melee crit, armor, and dodge, and I use as a default in solo, in groups, and in PvP. It isn't used very much in raid settings, unless you're in a group with hunters where it provides them ranged attack power. The max rank of Grace of Air Totem is rank 3, and this is only attainable from the tablet of Grace of Air Totem 3, which is lootable from bosses in AQ20. So if you want to have rank 3 of Grace of Air Totem, you'll either have to run AQ20 or buy it from the auction house. This totem, like Strength of Earth Totem, is affected by enhancing totems, increasing the effect of your totem by 8% in rank 1 and 15% in rank 2, and is also affected by Totemic Mastery, increasing its range to 30 yards. Next is Grounding Totem, which is a 45 second duration, a 15 second cooldown, is obtainable at level 30, and has a 20 yard range. This is a unique type of totem which actually provides damage negation. What this totem does is it absorbs a harmful spell cast on a player or a party member. If the totem is hit by a damaging effect, it will destroy the totem in the process. This is best in PvP scenarios when battling a caster class, especially a mage or a warlock. If you see a caster power up a certain spell, like Pyroblast or Shadow Bolt, you can drop a grounding totem and nullify that spell. It's great especially if your earth shock is on cooldown and you cannot silence. There's also a lot of uses in PvE scenarios, especially when you're soloing. If you see that a mob is casting a spell, you can drop Grounding Totem and negate that spell. Grounding Totem is affected by the Guardian Totem's talent in the Enhancement Tree, which reduces the cooldown of your Grounding Totem by 1 second in rank 1 and 2 seconds in rank 2. And it is also affected by the Totemic Mastery talent, increasing its radius to 30 yards. Next, we'll talk about Tranquil Air Totem, which is a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 50, and has a 20 yard range. This totem is a threat reduction type totem. What it does is it reduces all threat by the player and or party members within its range with a 0.8x threat modifier. In other words, this is a 20% reduction to threat. This is important and needed in many raid boss encounters to reduce the threat of DPS and or healers, especially if high burst or spiky DPS occurs, or if the tanks are having trouble sustaining and maintaining aggro. This totem is affected by Totemic Mastery, increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Nature Resistance Totem has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 30, and has a 20 yard range. This is a resistance totem, which increases the nature resistance of a player and or party members within its range by a fixed amount increasing with each totem's rank. This is important in fights where nature damage is dealt raid-wide or party-wide, especially in encounters in Encourage. This totem is affected by the Totemic Mastery talent increasing its range from 20 to 30 yards. Windball totem has a 2 minute duration, no cooldown, is attained at level 36, and has a 20 yard range. It is a damage reduction type totem. It reduces ranged physical damage to players and our party members within its range, very similar to Stone Skin Totem, but instead of melee damage, it reduces range damage. This is best in PvP scenarios when battling a hunter or hunters, in that it reduces the damage that they do to you or to the people under the totem's control. There are minimal uses for this totem in PvE, as you would most likely use Grace of Air Totem in those situations if you're soloing, and there are minimal uses in raid type settings. This totem is affected by Guardian Totems, which increases the damage reduced by your Windwall Totem by 10% rank 1 and 20% rank 2, and is also affected by the Totemic Mastery Talent, increasing its range to 30 yards. Finally, we have Sentry Totem, which is a 5 minute duration, no cooldown, is obtained at level 34, and has really no range to it. The type is unique in that it's a, it's a reconnaissance totem. When you place it down, it allows the shaman to switch sight between the totem and his or herself. So you'd place the totem down, right click on the buff on your buff window, and by clicking that buff, you'll switch between looking at it from the totem's eyes or your eyes. 
So the uses of this are, are obviously situational. You can use it to spy on different players or perform reconnaissance for setting up some PvP skirmishes or world PvP. It's a fun totem to have for sure, and if you play around with it, I'm sure you can find more uses for it. Okay, we've covered all the totems. I didn't mention a talent in the restoration tree that can affect all of your totems. And this is Totemic Focus. So if we take this talent, which is in the tier two of the restoration tree, and there's five ranks, it reduces the mana cost of your totems by 5% with each rank. I didn't mention this because it affects every single totem. So if you have this talent, just realize that it reduces the mana cost of your totems. Okay, let's go over some common totem loadouts you'll be using in different scenarios when playing a shaman. The first one we'll go over is when you're soloing, and this really goes for any of the specs, including elemental. For your fire totem, you're going to put down searing totem for a single target dot. For your air totem, you're most likely going to put down grace of air totem to increase your agility. For your earth totem, it depends if you're earth bind cutting or not. If you aren't, you're going to use strength of earth to increase your DPS. And if you're earth bind cutting, you're obviously going to be using an earth bind totem. And finally, for your water totem, you're going to use your mana spring totem to regen mana during your fights. As in all scenarios, try to strategically place down your totem so that you can draw and enemies to your totems so you don't have to keep putting them down over and over again. You may be asking yourself, if I'm elemental, why should I put down Strength of Earth or Grace of Air? If you don't kill the enemy with your lightning bolts, you're probably going to be using a dagger with flametongue weapon to finish them off, so any increase in DPS is probably worth it. Next, let's go over the scenario where you pull two or more mobs. In this scenario, you would change your Fire Totem to either Fire Nova or Magma Totem to increase AoE damage going out. I usually prefer Fire Nova Totem because it's really hard to hold aggro on all the mobs, and Magma Totem will just cause mobs to attack it, so Fire Nova is my go-to choice here. For your Earth Totem, you're either going to use Stone Skin to decrease melee damage taken, or Stone Claw to taunt mobs off of you and onto that totem so you can handle one mob at a time. This all really depends on what you're doing, what spec you are. If you are elemental, I'd probably go stone claw because you don't have a lot of armor. But if you're a one-hander and shield build, you should probably just go stone skin because you can handle the damage. Your grace of air totem will stay the same because agility will increase your dodge and armor. And for water, I'd probably go with healing stream instead of mana spring because you're gonna need some healing over time. Okay, now let's go over the situation where you're either dungeon or raid healing and you're with a heavy melee group in a dungeon or you're in the melee group in a raid. In this situation, the fire totem is really situational. It really depends on what the situation is, if there's a need for frost resistance, if there is, you're going to put frost resistance totem down. Other than that, just put down maybe searing if you can afford it mana wise. If you can't, don't put a fire totem down. For the earth totem, your primary pick is going to be strength of earth to increase DPS. However, if you see that there's sustained melee damage going on and your melee is really getting hit really hard, you may want to put Stone Skin down to decrease melee damage taken by your tank or the other melee DPS. Finally, use Tremor only if needed. If you know you're in a kind of fight where fears are going to be coming out, you're going to put Tremor down instead of Strength of Earth or Stone Skin. Your Air Totem slot is usually going to be Wind Fury, since you have a heavy melee group, or if you're in a melee group, you're going to provide Wind Fury to increase DPS. However, if you notice that your tank is, cannot hold aggro, or the DPS are having a really hard time controlling their threat output, you're going to put Tranquil Air Totem down in this situation. Finally, this won't happen often, maybe in only fights in AQ, you're going to put your Nature Resistance Totem in this slot if you know it's going to be a fight that's going to have high nature damage going out. And finally, your Water Totem slot. Most of the time, you're going to put Mana Spring in here to regenerate your mana during long fights, but if, you're not, if you don't have mana issues or if there's long-term low amounts of damage going out to your group, you're going to put Healing Stream Totem down in this situation. Situation. Finally, you may put Fire Resistance Totem in this slot during Molten Core or Nixia's Lair or certain fights in Blackwing Lair where you know there's high amounts of fire damage coming out. You may switch Fire Resistance Totem into this slot in that situation. You'll notice that I do not have Mana Tide Totem here because it's not a default water option. It's a cooldown you're going to use if you have it when you need it. Mana Tide will never be your default water totem, but it will be a situational water totem you'll weave in and out of the fight. Alright, let's go over a situation now where you're dungeon or raid healing, and either your dungeon group has a lot of casters or ranged players in it, or you're in the caster or healer group in a raid setting. In this situation, just like before, the fire totem is totally situational. If you have the mana to spend, you can increase the raid-wide DPS by putting a searing down, or if you're in a fight that requires frost resistance, you're going to put frost resistance in this totem slot. Your earth totem slot really doesn't have any benefits for ranged players, however, you can put the Tremor Totem in this slot if you think there's going to be some fears coming out, or if you know there's going to be some fears coming out, you're going to put the Tremor Totem in this slot. For your Air Totem slot, 
Your primary pick here is going to be Tranquil Air Totem because if you can reduce the threat that casters and healers are producing, you might as well do it and put Tranquil Air Totem down. The only time you're going to deviate from this is if you're in a group with all hunters, which will probably never happen. In that case, you're going to put Grace of Air Totem down to increase their agility, which just increases their attack power. And finally, in those fights where you're going to need Nature Resistance, you're going to swap out Nature Resistance Totem in this slot in that situation. Finally, for the Water Totem slot, always, always, always put Mana Tide Totem in this slot to regen the mana of the other casters or healers in your group. If you're in a fight where you need Fire Resistance, however, you're going to swap Fire Resistance Totem out for Mana Spring in that situation. Okay, let's go over the scenario where you're in a five-man group and there are more than one Shaman. So you're one of two Shaman. In this situation, you have to plan out who's putting what totem down. The fire totem is of course situational. You can both put down searing, you can both put down magma, it doesn't really matter. These are DPS increases for the most part. Very, very rarely in five mans you're gonna have to put down resistance totems. For your earth totem slot, make sure one of you puts down strength of earth and one of you puts down stone skin. And you can prioritize depending on your talents. You know, if you have enhancing totems, then you should be the one putting down strength of earth. And if he has guardian totems, then he should be putting the, the stone skin totem down. Be smart about who puts down what. And that goes for the water totems too, of course. We'll get to that in a second. And next we have the air totems. One challenge should be putting grace of air down to increase agility. And one totem should be putting wind fury totem down to allow for wind fury procs. If there's no melee in your group and you're in the bear druid group, then there's no point putting wind fury down. Put something else down. But grace of air should definitely be down by one of the shaman. And finally, for the Water Totem slot, one of you put down Mana Spring, one of you put down Healing Stream. If one of you is Resto and you have the points and restorative totems, consider which totem is more important and you put that one down uh, because your, yours will be more effective. So just make sure you're not doubling up on totems. That's a waste of mana and the totem effects don't stack. Communicate with the other Shaman and put the right combination of totems down. Finally, let's go over Shaman Tanking. I'm sure this will not be a very popular loadout, but if you do plan on Shaman Tanking, this is the loadout I recommend. The Fire Totem, of course, will be situational. If you can put down Fire Nova, Magma, Magma Totem, or Searing Totem, just remember that the Totems itself have their own threat table. They do not increase your threat. So if you just want to increase base DPS, you can do that. For the Earth Totem, I would put Stone Skin Totem nine times out of 10. It'll decrease all the melee damage you take. Very important. Again, if there are two Shamans in the group, you can decide who puts down what. For Air, I would definitely put down Grace of Air. It increases your agility, which increases your crit, dodge, and armor. All those things can either increase your survivability or increase your threat generation. Very, very good Totem to have there. And for the Water Totem, I would actually put Mana Spring instead of Healing Stream. Healing Stream does heal you, but the amount of healing per two seconds is not going to make or break you as a tank. However, your sustainability, as far as mana is concerned, if you can get an extra Earth Shock out, could stop you from wiping. In this situation, Mana Spring is the go-to totem to go with. Finally, let's go over add-ons you should be looking for when Classic launches. Now, there are add-ons that are out now for 1.12. They will likely not work in Classic WoW. So things I would definitely get is a totem timer add-on so you can track not only what totems are out, but how long they have before they go away. I would definitely get a swing timer if you are considering Earthbind kiting. You really can't Earthbind kite without a, an accurate swing timer because you'll be missing out on when you, your swing timer will reset and that will severely decrease your DPS and your leveling time. And finally, I would get a weapon rebuff reminder. This has nothing to do with totems. However, your weapon enhancements only last five minutes. And if you don't remember to re-enchant your weapon, you are losing out on DPS. So very, very important thing to get. So these three add-ons are a must if you want to play a shaman. I really hope you guys enjoyed this guide. However, there are many, many other pieces of content you should check out if you're even considering playing a shaman. So if you're interested in leveling, I have two leveling guides, part one and two, that are on my channel, Death Camp Melder on TV. I also have a restoration leveling guide if you want to level as Resto. Cargos also has an amazing shaman leveling guide where he explains earthbind cutting. You should check that out as well. For endgame, the egregious guide to Resto Shaman is by far the best resource for learning how to play a restoration shaman endgame. You can check his guide out on Classic Wild Live. In that guide, also he provides period bis and a restoration shaman throughput and efficiency calculator, so check those things out. Orkbit also has a shaman guide you should check out and a pre-read bis guide. Check those out on his channel on youtube.com slash orkbit. And finally, Hamster Wheel has a excellent shaman guide as well. And last but not least, there's a shaman tanking guide that I put out a little while ago, which is based off of Totem Tank's shaman tanking guide. So check that out as well. There are a lot of resources for you out there if you wanna play a shaman. So check these out if you wanna learn more about shaman if you're interested in how they work. 
With that, I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like if you like this guide. Don't forget to comment below if you have anything that I've missed or if you want anything you want to ask me, just comment in the section below. Don't forget to share this guide with other people that are interested in playing Shaman. And if you like this type of stuff and you're interested in other content we make here, including things like Def Talk, where we interview WoW content creators and enthusiasts, and other types of videos, drop a subscribe because we have a lot more things coming. You can find Def Camp on Twitch at twitch.com slash defcamp. You can follow us on Discord and Twitter. We have those links are in the description. We also have Def Talk in podcast format on SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, and iTunes. Links for all these things are in the description. There will also be a link to the presentation slides and timestamps for each slide in a pinned comment below, so check that out. Also, this is part of a series of guides that will be available at ClassicWild.Live. There are many other guides on there by many, many talented people, so don't forget to check us out on ClassicWild.Live. Last but not least, I want to thank the patrons for making videos like this possible and providing me better hardware and software so I can bring you guys the best content. So thank you all very much. Thanks for watching. Keep on keep binding and grinding. And peace, my Shaman brothers and sisters. May the ancestors be with you.